Welcome to Simming History, where we look at the history of architecture through the lens of the Sims. In this episode, we're going to do the impossible. We're building Rome in a day. A Roman house, anyway. But first, we need to set some parameters. The Roman Republic and Empire spanned continents, from Egypt to Britain and Spain to Turkey. Each area would have had their own variation of housing, so we need to limit it, and we're going to limit it to Roman Italy. Specifically, Rome or Pompeii. In 79 CE, Pompeii was buried in ash from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which preserved the town and provides the clearest picture of Roman life. So we're going to be looking at the years 200 BCE to 100 CE, as that encompasses all the best remaining examples of the Roman home. We're also going to be looking at city life rather than country life, which leaves only the Domus or Insule. And we're going to be building the home of the wealthy Roman city citizen, the Domus. So as I begin to build the exterior, let's talk about the differences between Insule and the Domus. The Domus were family homes uh, for the wealthy and the powerful of Rome. These were the sort of families that made up the Senate, owned estates outside the city that provided the empire food, they were merchants and traders, and many would have owned and operated Insule themselves. The Insule were for everybody else. Where the Domus was at most two stories, the Insule was an apartment building and were many stories tall and during our time frame they could have been as much as seven stories tall and it wasn't until later that height limits were imposed. They were also notoriously overcrowded and the farther up your apartment the poorer you were. If you're from the United States think New York City tenements and you can kind of get close to what it was like. Filthy, crowded, and hot. And speaking of heating, the Domus frequently had heating systems called a hypocast. Basically, it was a column void below the house where hot air was circulated, which would then radiate to the rooms above. Insule had no other such system. You really couldn't do that between each floor, and instead tenants of the Insule had open braziers to heat their apartment. Basically, open fires in their rooms. Unsurprisingly, this caused a lot of fires in the Insule, and the Insule were notoriously known for two things, burning to the ground, and collapsing, and they were regarded as unsafe places to live. They were frequently built of mud brick and timbers with rubble infill, which was not very stable. Much later, their construction, as along with their height, would be regulated to prevent further collapses and fires. Domus, on the other hand, were sturdily built with clay brick and mortar. They also had clay tile roofs. Both the Domus and the Insule housed shops as well as living quarters. At Insule, the shops occupied the first floor, whereas Domus had shops fit into any street facing side. Some Domus that occupied whole blocks may have had shops on all four sides. There was also no regular shape of the Domus, and they operated kind of like infill between other houses and buildings. Just inside the main door through a vestibule would have been the atrium. The atrium acted as the center of the home, off of which were multiple family rooms. In the center of the atrium was an opening in the roof called a compluvium, which allowed rainwater to drain into a center pool, the impluvium. 
This water was then collected in giant cisterns for household use. There were a variety of floor finishes found in ancient Roman houses. They could either have been cut marble or tessellated mosaics. Tessellated mosaics being the far more recognized uh, flooring. The mosaics could be in geometric shapes or full scenes of mythology or a mix of both. For this build, I've gone with a geometric mosaic throughout as it's the closest thing in Sims. Around the perimeter of the atrium were cubiculums, or bedrooms for the house's occupants. They were also located off the back garden, which we'll get to shortly, or sometimes off of a rare second floor. Furnishings were fairly simple. The beds would resemble to us something more like a chaise longue or a lounger, with a platform, kind of large turned legs, and a slightly raised back with a thin mattress on top. This is the closest thing in Sims for this purpose, and is actually a custom content outdoor lounger. There would also have been some sort of storage or wardrobe. We've talked about floors, so let's talk about walls. The walls could have been covered in marble as well, called revetment. They were thin slabs of stone set in mortar in regular patterns. But they could also have been painted murals, depicting landscapes, scenes of entertainment, or scenes of mythology. The dining room was known as the triclinium. Only the wealthy ate in their homes, and they never ate out. They may have eaten at a friend's house or at a party, but they never ate out publicly. Eating in and having lavish parties was a sign of wealth, whereas eating out, like the occupants of the insula did for every single meal, was a sign of, well, not being wealthy. The triclinium would have had a center table for the laying out of food and drink, and it would have been surrounded on three sides by lounging couches or beds. As several ancient cultures, including Rome, believed digestion was aided by lying down. Now these were the closest match Sims had. I mean, they are clearly more mid-century modern, but they have the right proportions. They wouldn't have had any backs, they wouldn't have had any arms, and they would have been wide enough for three occupants to lay across the couch perpendicularly facing the table. The final room off the atrium, the tablinium, was the paterfamilia's office. The paterfamilia was the head of the family. This is where he would have met with business associates who would have actually waited in the atrium until he was ready to receive them. It's also where there would have been a chest chained to the floor containing the family's valuables and wealth. Also, if possible, there would have been windows to the peristylium or the back garden. This was an extremely desirable location for that reason, because fresh air and natural light was only accessible off of the atrium or the peristylium, as the exterior walls did not have any windows. This is because they're either bordered on the sides by other buildings, or because the street faces were filled with shops. Also, the streets weren't all that clean. Everyone thinks of Rome as being clean, but it really wasn't. At the Insula, for example, occupants would dump their waste just out the window. The streets were crowded and filthy and dirty, and nobody wanted that in their home. If the Domus occupants wanted to leave for any reason, they actually would have been carried in litters by slaves rather than walk in the crowded, dirty streets. Through the back doors of the atrium is the column peristylium, or garden. It primarily served as a space for the family to be able to walk around. Many were entirely decorative, but others may have also included a kitchen garden or would have been entirely a kitchen garden. 
Off the peristylium may have been more bedrooms, space allowing, or if that space was needed. But one thing would not have been there was a bath. Baths were social functions, and every occupant of the city, whether an occupant of a domus or an insule, used public baths. The back of the house would have housed the kitchen and latrine. Some houses may have been connected to city water and sewer lines, but there was also the cisterns from the atrium collection. And there would also have been multiple stoves and ovens. The latrine was also located in the back of the house, off the side of the kitchen, and was essentially an indoor outhouse, wooden seat and all. But at least the domus had a latrine. Occupants of the insule may have had to use public latrines instead of having one inside their building. Above the kitchen, there would have been the servant or slave quarters, and that would have been accessed via a narrow stair or ladder. Finally, in either the peristylium or the atrium, there would have been the lararium, or family shrine, where among other things, the daughters would have dedicated their toys the night before their wedding. Building this was tricky in The Sims, and not really doable without the custom content of the statue and the columns. But in the end, made it work, and it's more or less what it would have looked like. So there you have it, the Roman Domus. From the outside, it really doesn't look like what most people think of when they think Roman architecture, but I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. I have included some links down below to actual examples of uh, Roman murals and furniture. Uh, let me know in the comments what style or era you'd like to see next. You can find me on the Sims 4 Gallery and on Instagram at Simming History, where I post teasers for next week's video. 
make sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.